Hi. Welcome to DEF CON 3. This is the hour each week here on FoxNews.com Live where we go beyond the sound bites and we dig deeper into the national security issues of the day. I'm KT McFarland and today we'll begin in Pakistan with Dominic Di Natale and his guests in Islamabad. So, Dominic, what's the latest in the very strange U.S.-Pakistani relationship? Well, I'll tell you what, KT, relations between the United States and Pakistan are actually rock bottom right now. It's been 12 disaster-strewn months for these two supposed allies in the fight against Islamist extremism and terror. There was an inadvertent U.S.-led NATO attack on a Pakistan border post in November that left 24 soldiers dead, and it's caused a national outcry here and has stoked even deeper anti-Americanism. You say we have guests, we do indeed. Maria Sultan, the Director General of the South Asian Strategic Stability Institute, and also Professor Tariq Pizar, if I pronounce that correctly, who's an analyst on U.S.-Pakistan relations. Thank you very much for joining both of us. I think KT has got an opening question for us. Uh, I'll let you fire away first of all, KT. Yes, you know, yesterday, last night, the President Obama gave the State of the Union address before all branches of government, before the Congress, the U.S. Supreme Court, the um, the entire legislator and the executive branches, legislative, judicial. In that speech, what he talked about was his greatest crowning moment, the Bin Laden raid. And yet, almost everyone in the United States, certainly sitting in that chamber, had to assume that the Bin Laden raid would not have succeeded if the president had told the Pakistani government in advance that we were going to do it. Now, Dominic, you've just mentioned that the the Bin Laden raid is a, is a sticking point from the Pakistani perspective. From the American perspective, it's our greatest success. So why don't you ask your guests, what, what do they think? How is this disconnect going to work out in the future? I'm actually going to hand that to, to Maria first of all. I mean, what this outlines is something you and I were talking about earlier on today, actually, and that's the deficit of tr trust between the United States and Pakistan. I think the biggest question over here has been uh, the way and the manner in which it was conducted. The issue is really, though, in terms of relationships, is that America had to do this entirely on its own. It was some Pakistani civilians, that he, uh, individuals that he used to actually gather the intel, but at the end of the day, it was... It was America that actually had to capture Osama bin Laden on American soil. That says an awful lot about the American relationship with Pakistan. Well, you know, there's one thing that is clear, that U.S. and Pakistan are not on the same page. That is very clear. Uh, that is established by, after, you know, attack on Aftabad. Uh, the way it was, uh, you know, conducted, that also prove, proves, uh, proves the point that they are not on the same page. Uh, so the, the other point is, yes, Pakistan does fight against terrorism. It has fought against terrorism, but not at the cost of its sovereignty. The first issue, of course, is drones. Drones have been the biggest, single, greatest tool that America has in actually getting rid of militants hiding in the tribal area. America has not only killed militants that have been attacking NATO forces, but also the kind of militants that are actually trying to bring down the Pakistan government as well. It's almost unfeasible to imagine that drones won't be used. However, an emotive issue, they actually are, Maria. I think it's, we have to see whenever you're using a certain technology or certain tactics in a long drawn war, what is the, the the, the net effect of that. Uh, drones are right now being conducted by the CIA, which is considered as, as an illegal combatant. The ratio of civilian casualties is almost 30 to 40 percent. So for every known target, you're almost taking 40 other civilians. And for a very concentrated area, like the federally administrative tribal area, you are creating anti-Americanism. You're creating sense in which innocent people, women, children, are being killed as a result of illegal combatants based on faulty information. How much reassurance do you think that gives people in the States? <laughs> Very little. Uh, and I do think, Dominic, you're right to say that the nuclear weapons question and who has control of the nuclear weapons is a paramount question. It certainly was the major issue that the outgoing chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mullen, was concerned with throughout his position in the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And a man who, as he left office this last summer, basically said Pakistan is not necessarily a friend of the United States and not necessarily to be trusted. Dominic, we've got to close it there because we have a hard break, but I want you to please thank your guests for joining us and we'd love to have them on again.